Hello, my name is Craig Earlham, Senior Market Analyst at Oanda. In this video, we're going to talk about gold. Now, gold has been really interesting recently. It's very much got a strong correlation with the US dollar. But what's been additionally interesting about this is how gold has responded during the different phases of the evolution of the US dollar. Now, typically, gold tends to perform better when the dollar is weaker and tends to perform worse when the dollar is stronger. And the simple reason for this is that when the dollar is stronger, then gold becomes more expensive to non-dollar holders. And, and the, the inverse of this is true. Now, the correlation isn't perfect. There are other factors which tend to contribute to the movements in gold, one of which is risk appetite in the market. So naturally, towards the in the final three months of last year, gold was actually performing quite well, even though gold was, even though the dollar was relatively mixed and at times actually uh, was actually rising. But because risk aversion was so strong in the market, that benefited gold. Now, what we've seen more recently, and what I think is a strong reflection of the market's bullish sentiment with gold, has been twofold. One of which is we finally saw a breakthrough $1,300. Now, these key psychological levels can be quite important of markets. And the simple reason is that when we break through these levels, it suggests that traders are very bullish. So it gives us that strong signal. We ran into some resistance around 1320. That's a historic level of support and resistance as well. So that comes as no surprise. At this moment in time, we're holding above 1300. And as long as that remains the case, then that gives us that little bit of confirmation of the initial break. And especially if we see a test of 1300 in the interim, and a rotation higher, again, that's seen as confirmation, that is seen as a bullish signal. And after that, we're looking for a break through the previous highs. But the other thing that I think has been most interesting, the second factor of this is that we are still seeing periods of dollar strength and dollar weakness. But what I like about this and what makes me more bullish on the gold front is the fact that during periods of, uh, of dollar weakness, we are seeing these upsurges in gold, as you would expect. During periods of dollar strength, on the other hand, we're not necessarily seeing big downturns uh, in, 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 in a comparable way. Instead, this is where we're seeing a bit of profit taken in gold. We're maybe seeing some slight uh, consolidation or we're seeing some sideways trading, but we're not seeing the reversals in gold that we are potentially seeing in the dollar. That tells me two things. That tells me, one, that traders are bullish on gold and therefore very reluctant to uh, let go uh, of this rally. But it also tells me, too, that people are maybe more bearish on the US dollar, uh, which is why we are seeing the, more, the, the bigger moves here. But it suggests that, again, people still think more dollar weakness is coming, which feeds into that gold narrative. So for me, this still really looks quite bullish at the moment, despite the fact that we've seen some bearish price action in recent days and as long as this holds above $1,300 that will continue to be the case. Of course the other two signals which I will be keeping a close eye on because of the relationship is going to be overall market risk appetite which at the moment is relatively good but not perfect and also the movement in the dollar. If we see a dramatic shift in the dollar uh, and in sentiment towards the greenback and we start to see that making new highs and pushing on towards those previous levels then that will make me question what we're seeing in the dollar right now but as it stands all the factors seem to be uh, moving in the same direction and all of that suggests to me that there is some more bullish bullishness to come from gold and at the moment 1320 remains that key level of resistance beyond that 1340 1360 are historic levels of support and resistance so they're the levels i'll be keeping a close eye on as well